latest on U.S.-China tensions. In a tit-for-tat move, China has ordered the closure of the U.S. consulate in Chengdu. The move comes three days after the U.S. ordered China to shut down its consulate in Houston. The consulate general of the United States in Chengdu was one of the seven American diplomatic missions in China. The consulate district, among other places, included Tibet. In a statement, the Chinese foreign ministry made it clear that it was a retaliatory move against the close of closure of the Houston consulate. It said that the measure taken by China is a legitimate and necessary response to the unjustified act by the United States. Beijing also said that it is not violating international law. Tensions escalated between Washington and Beijing after the United States asked China to shut down its consulate in Houston within 72 hours. U.S. said the consulate was helping Chinese nationals steal American intellectual property. For more details, I'm joined in by our correspondent Richard Kimber, who's joining us live from Hong Kong. This hour, Richard, a very warm welcome to you. Now that China has ordered the closure of a U.S. consulate as a retaliatory response, is not the consulate war just another front through which tensions are ratcheting up between the two nations? This Chengdu uh, consulate is an interesting development for the China's retaliation because it's specifically uh, a key listening post for U.S. efforts to try and understand what's happening in the western region of Tibet. Now, Tibet has long been a sore point between the east and the west in terms of superpower diplomacy because China has long sought to try and suppress dissent towards the Chinese government coming from the region of Tibet. So it's been a very important place for the U.S. to have ears and eyes to understand what's happening there. So to close down the Chengdu consulate has added significance. It's not just um, a random move by China, a very deliberate move to try and close down uh, a consulate that the U.S. has long been using to try and understand how dissent is forming towards the Chinese government. So that's the reason that Chengdu has right. been targeted in this way. Right. It's interesting uh, you mentioned the strategic importance of the consulate in Chengdu being uh, shut down. Now, how do you view the developments in the backdrop of Mike Pompeo's hawkish stance on hardening the approach towards China and the indictment of four Chinese nationals in the United States? Well, that's right. Mike Pompeo pulling no punches. He's been describing the reason that they had to shut down the consulate in Houston as being nothing other than massive theft of intellectual property. Uh, and in a speech yesterday, he really made it clear that he has no intention under his watch of allowing the Chinese Communist Party to develop further in the way that he says it is. Um, there's no question that there's going to be further action from the US if his words stand up with the actions that he and the Trump administration are planning to take. The real question is how, if at all, any diplomatic relations can continue Continue if instead of any conversation taking between the two superpowers, instead there is just this continued tit-for-tat retaliatory action. China is trying to play what it likes to think of as being the straight card uh, in this relationship by saying that it's only responding to U.S. actions. It's not provoking U.S. actions. And that's a key line that the Chinese foreign ministry has been pushing in recent weeks as this relationship has worsened. But in the international world, there's clearly still a lot of pressure on China, particularly through what's happening here in Hong Kong because of the the pressure on the Chinese government over the national security law. So really, until there's a return to dialogue, the like of which we became used to during the trade talks between the US and China, it seems unlikely that this kind of tension will actually simmer down. Well, actually, it's interesting how you mentioned Hong Kong. I'd actually like uh, you to tell me more about how the United States is using Hong Kong, Taiwan, and even India as a power to counterbalance uh, China's growing, uh, growing clout. Well, certainly Hong Kong has ended up stuck in the middle to a certain extent between the Chinese-US situation. Just uh, yesterday, of course, there was a big story here relating to the, the British National Overseas Passport Citizenship Offer, another example where Hong Kong ends up stuck in the middle between East and West, because in this case, not the US, but the UK trying to exert more pressure on China by, by welcoming up to three million Hong Kongers to basically leave Hong Kong and move to the UK instead. Hong Kong, again, really stuck between a rock and a hard place in this situation, because although it welcomes international pressure from overseas superpowers as part of a means of trying to push back against the influence of China in Hong Kong. It does also cause damage to both the Hong Kong economy and the basic social fabric of the city. So it's very much a difficult situation here and certainly as it becomes more complicated when Taiwan and India become involved as well, the whole geopolitical nature of this region is being shaken up by the continued discourse between uh, China and the US. So there's an effort really on all diplomatic fronts to see if there's a means to try and 
solve this problem rather than just watch and allow it to get worse. Perhaps that explains uh, why you said that China is not provoking, rather just responding. Uh, Richard, last but not the least, Asian stocks have been slipping due to the worsening U.S.-China tensions. What are the biggest market risks at a time when the world is already reeling under the pandemic and a previously escalated trade war? That's right. There's been a lot of uh, red activity on the markets here, both in uh, China and in Hong Kong today. Although it should be said that that comes after a very sustained rally that's basically been pushed and allowed to a certain extent by the Chinese authorities to allow this Chinese stock rally in the last month to really uh, boom in a way that perhaps doesn't reflect the true fundamentals of the market values of the, of the companies involved. But nevertheless, a lot of red activity on the markets today as this tension continues to rise. And being a Friday, it seems unlikely that things will turn around quickly towards the end of the week. Instead, perhaps a more cautionary approach heading into the weekend, knowing that indeed the U.S. markets will then react U.S. time Friday. And perhaps only on Monday will we really see the, the full impact of what happens in the Asian markets after the U.S. starts trading on Friday, when no doubt will be some response from the U.S. over this Chinese move to the consulate in Chengdu. Right. So we'll have to wait and watch to see the impact on the markets on Monday for now. Thank you so much, Richard, for bringing us all those.